What's up, my creators? Chris Kelly here with ProductionCrate.com. Today, we're going to show you how to use the new neon type kit to make some awesome neon signs like this. Oh my gosh, you know it's your boy, Adrian Jensen <laughs> from ProductionCrate.com. All right, first, we're going to want to go to Footage Crate and we're going to find the type kit. How do we do it? Okay, select VFX and Media Elements, Typography Kits, and then you're going to see the neon type kit. It's beautiful. At the top, you're going to see two shiny golden stars. They're not that shiny, but they are golden. One of them says download AE type kit script and one of them says download complete type kit bundle and you're going to want to grab both of those. Yoink. <laughs> the type crate script is just the easiest way that you can actually type with our animated type kits. The other option would be to just download each character individually and drag them onto your timeline one by one. Click the production crate logo to select your type kit folder, which is that thing that we just downloaded earlier. You're gonna wanna unzip it though. True. You can type whatever you want. We'll change our number of lines to two and type make it awesome. That's, hey, we that's kind of our thing. Time. Yep. There's a lot of settings for spacing and randomness and stuff here. Usually you'll wanna play with those because each type kit we provide is a little bit different, but luckily the default settings actually actually work very well for the neon kit. So let's go ahead and hit generate. If you're not quite in love with your spacing, the control null has a tracking slider you can use to change it very easily. There's also individual controls for each line as well, so we can mess around with those until they're perfect. These letters do have a built-in animation and the type crate script automatically applies some time remap keyframes. You can totally use these keyframes or make your own to customize the animation if you'd like to. We're not gonna do anything too drastic for now. We're just gonna offset the words a little little bit so that they don't appear at the exact same time. Right now, these words are looking blue AF fam. Hello, fellow kids. And we'd like to add a bit more color variation. It's really easy to do with a hue saturation effect. Once we're happy with that, we can just pre-compose everything and we're gonna call this our words comp. To make this look like more of a neon sign and less like a font, we wanna connect these letters up with some wires. Over on Graphics Gray, we just added some pre-keyed photographed wires. Let's bring a few of those in. If you're wondering why these are so well organized, it's because we use the Production Crate Connect browser extension. Ooh. It makes organization very easy and automated. Every time that you download something from Production Crate, it's gonna instantly organize it into a folder. It also makes it so you're not downloading hundreds of copies of the same effect that you use all the time, which we used to do and now we don't. It's saving your hard drive tons of space and it's gonna tell you when new stuff Stuff is uploaded. All right, here's a quick trick for when the wires don't connect exactly how you want them to. Ooh, let's we, hear it. <laughs> <laughs> we want this corner attached to the A, but then that means this corner is just way too high. If we rotate it, the hanging wires would point the wrong way, and it looks like we've never heard of gravity before, which, I, to be fair, is a new concept for both of us. <laughs> let's apply a transform effect and turn up the skew amount a little bit. As long as we leave the skew axis as is and we don't put push it too far, this is gonna fix our problem and make the wires cooperate a bit better. We know this is a bit of a grungy look, so if you're not that into it and you'd rather keep the sign looking clean, that's up to you, Kratos, it's fine. Hey, you can hey, skip hey, the hey. wires. Me gonna say nothing. School, school, school. <laughs> But we're going for more of a cyberpunk or a dystopian type look here. Once all those wires are in place and looking like a proper fire hazard, <laughs> select them. Control Shift C to pre-compose them. And we're going to call that comp wires. We need a background. We need a background. We're just going to drag in a picture of some bricks, but this can be anything. Get it in place, pre-compose it. It's looking a little bright considering that this is more of a nighttime scene. So let's add a CC spotlight effect and mess with the settings until until it looks good. We want something dramatic. We can also use an exposure to bring the overall brightness down so those bright colored letters can be the star of the show. Just like you, Adrian. <laughs> Out of nowhere compliment. You gotta be nice. ready for me. <laughs> those are hard to come by around here. <laughs> Now we want to have some light being thrown from those letters onto the background. So here's how we do it. Duplicate the background, delete the effects off of the duplicate and add a CC glass effect. That looks dumb. See, I told you <laughs> compliments are hard to get around here. <laughs> Open up surface and change the displacement to zero. We just want to make highlights right now. Let's open the shading tab and we can turn the ambient down to zero and the diffuse down to zero as well so that we're all we're seeing are those highlights. 
Let's go ahead and bring down our softness because bricks are really rough with lots of details, not soft at all. Yep, I used to sleep on one until I bought a pillow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> You're really coming up in the world. <laughs> yeah. Leaps and bounds, my friend. We'll change our light from effects light to AE light, which isn't gonna do squat because we don't have any dang AE lights. So let's make one. Let's make one. We'll pick one of the colors from one of the letters. We'll just go with green to match our first one. Now we can see what kind of highlights are being made by this light. If we grab the Z axis, we can move it forward and back. Our letters are sitting on the wall, so we want the light pretty close to the wall. So now that we have a light in our scene and we can actually see what we're doing, we can refine our settings further. Metal? Nah, we'll turn that off. Bricks ain't metal, bro. Ah, smart. We're gonna wanna push the roughness and the specular around a bit until it starts to look pretty good. Moving this light around a bit, you might notice that it's kind of doing the reverse of what we actually wanted to. The bricks are looking concave rather than convex. They're Chris, pushing- English, please. <laughs> They're pushing in when they should be pushing out. Oh, okay. Okay. Like belly buttons. <laughs> They're all wrong. Most are wrong. If you got an Audi, you're one of the lucky few. The effect one doesn't know. One of us. One <laughs> of <laughs> Been suction cupping Nico's belly buttons. Don't worry, Nico. You'll fit in soon. <laughs> <laughs> or fit out, should I say? <laughs> <laughs> or should I say out? <laughs> oh no. Uh, am I gonna leave that in? Maybe. I, we'll see. <laughs> the effect itself doesn't know what bricks look like and it's just guessing wrong. You can change the height to negative and that's gonna fix it. Looks pretty good now. We're just gonna tweak these settings a bit until we're finally happy with it. The reason we're not saying numbers at you right now is because <laughs> every situation is different and we don't think that just telling you what numbers to use is actually very helpful. But you know what? Here's our settings if you want to go ahead and copy them. Be our guest. Again, I don't recommend just copying these settings, but I want you to know that I trust you with making your own decisions. So we totally trust right you. Choice. We don't recommend it. This will not come back to bite you later. <laughs> <laughs> if we move this light around, you can see that it's working great. But how do we sync these lights up with our animation? Keyframing the brightness? No, that sounds <laughs> terrible. There's got to be a better way to animate this. Did somebody say there's got to be a better way to animate this? Yeah, it was me. Hey, what's up? Yo, I'm here to help you. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I don't know if you guys were paying attention last week, but we literally just released a brand new free tool that does exactly that. Cool. The Light Sampler Script. <laughs> Make sure to check out our long video on that if you want to learn absolutely everything you need to know about using it. But we're just gonna briefly go through the settings right here as well. Let's go. Let's open that up. Our sample layer will be the words comp. Our sample size doesn't need to be too huge because those are thin letters. Four should do the trick. For maximum brightness, we don't actually want it that high because we're gonna be duplicating this light a few times and that's gonna start adding up. So why don't we go ahead and just set that to 25. For layer type, we do want it to be a point light, but if you guys remember, we already kind of made a point light when we were testing the CC glass effect earlier and that light is already the right color and it's in the right spot. It's exactly what we need. So you know what? If we just make sure to have that light selected, the script is just gonna apply expressions directly to that light rather than making a whole new light and making us go through that again. Wow, that's awesome. We wanna make sure sample brightness is on. We don't actually want to sample color right now because we want the color of these lights to remain consistent. So it's better if we just set that manually. We don't want a control null either because in this case, the area we're sampling from is the same place that the light is actually gonna be. So having those external controls isn't gonna be useful for us. Hit generate. Hit generate. Now this point light that we made is actually going to react to the brightness of the M. Let's just make sure that it's centered on one of the neon bars and then we're gonna hit play to test it. Wow, the highlights now only show up when the green light is actually turned on and that's, that's great. pretty nifty. Yeah, cool. cool. They're pretty dim, but you know what, that's okay. We can actually duplicate this light as many times as we want now because we already have a light that's working, you know? We don't need to go through the whole process again with the script for each individual letter. This is why we didn't want a control null because having all the expressions can find a one layer makes this super duper easy. Having one light for each letter is now making our highlights much brighter as well. So everybody wins. Yeah. Now we want some pink lights. Ooh, it's pretty. gonna be no problem whatsoever. Let's duplicate the light one more time and let's grab every light except the newest one and we'll change the layer color on them to be green. 
This does absolutely nothing except make our timeline look a bit more organized. We're gonna end up with a lot of layers, so being able to tell them apart really quickly at a glance is gonna be very useful for us. So the new light that we're gonna color pink, let's go ahead and color the layer to be pink as well. And we need to change the color in the light settings to be pink. And we'll move that onto the eye and make a couple duplicates for the T. And now we've got pink highlights as well. Awesome. Speaking of awesome. Awesome. For the word awesome, it's the exact same process. Awesome. It's just that our lights are gonna be blue now. Awesome. Awesome, now we have highlights in three different colors. Let's finally change the CC glass layer to an add transfer mode so the highlights are actually compositing on to our background. Now that we've done that, we can see that the highlights are actually pretty extreme. It's probably a good idea to reassess our CC glass settings at this point. It's pretty hard to guess what your settings are gonna need to be before you actually have lights in your scene. But now that we have them, we can make sure to get them right. Hey, I bet you're pretty glad you didn't copy us before, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you did, you activated our trap card. Ha ha ha! The CC glass effect doesn't really have light fall off built into it, so we can just fake it with a CC vignette effect. We should maybe drop some extra glow on an adjustment layer, but this is basically done, guys, and it looks pretty good. We got a lot of cool out of it without a whole lot of effort. Yeah, as we do. Since the lights are still controlled by expressions, we can actually make last minute changes to the animation of our words themselves, and the lights will update. If we decide at the last second that we want each letter to be offset rather than each word, we can do that is no problem. Now our highlights are reacting to each individual letter rather than the entire word. If we want to actually change what the sign says, we can do that too. Sure. But if we do, we're going to have to move our lights to match the new letters, but it's still going to work. We're going to highlight all of our lights and use the shy switch to hide them. Now, don't worry, they're still there. They're just hidden from view since they take up a lot of space in our timeline, but we know we're not gonna change them for now. We can bring them back anytime we want. All right, creators, now you know how to make highlights in the background, but what if you want some highlights on the letters themselves? For example, when the word it lights up pink, we're gonna want the M to have some pink highlights on it, right? So yeah, let's make it sense. happen. Cool, okay, yeah, yeah, I like yeah. this. <laughs> I like this. Let's duplicate our words comp and move back to the beginning of the timeline. We're gonna freeze frame it. For these highlights, we really only wanna look at the shape of the glass. We don't want the glowing animation throwing us off at all. Realistically, it probably wouldn't, but let's just not give it a chance, you know? Yeah. Let's apply a fill effect and change it to white and then a solid composite and change that to black like my soul. Cool. I used to say stuff like that all the time. Now I don't. <laughs> Mr. Sunshine over here. <laughs> you can still see some shadow detail here and we don't need that for what we're doing. So let's use the levels to get rid of it. Finally, a fast box blur will soften it right up and that's gonna be our map for the CC glass effect. Let's pre-compose it and apply CC glass. Once again, eh, it looks pretty stupid. <laughs> True. We don't want any displacement whatsoever and we wanna turn the ambient off. So all we're seeing are the highlights. We don't really know what we want the other other settings to be until we turn on the After Effects lights. So let's do that now. And now we can see what it's looking like. You know what? It's actually looking pretty good. Since glass is much smoother than bricks, the default CC glass settings are working a lot better for this layer. See what I did? Yeah, makes sense. If we change this layer to a screen mode, you can see that our highlights are kind of bleeding over the edges, which is not something that we want. So we can just duplicate our words again and use that as an oh for Matt. Whoop, whoop, oh for Matt. Wonder what our neighbors think. <laughs> this looks really cool. As our green letters start to flash, the other letters are getting lit up and they're separate highlights for each individual letter. And as the pink turns on, we see those pink highlights as well. And then as the blue letter turns on, the other letters that aren't lit up yet start getting blue highlights as well. It's honestly really, really pretty. It looks very good. It's a little bit intense. Maybe we can turn down the diffuse and turn up the specular a little bit since glass is like super shiny. <laughs> that's gonna give us smaller, shinier highlights. Glasses like super shiny. Super shiny. If we want to light up the wires, which I mean, I think we may as well. It's the exact same process. Just copy those same steps. One Mogan. If you look in the neon type kit section of footage crate, you'll see a bunch of pre-made signs. This is the exact process that we use to make all of those. Now you can make signs that say whatever you want. Again, if you missed last week's video about the light sampler script, 
make sure to check that out because it can do a whole lot more than just this, guys. It's really cool. Yeah, and the script is 100% free. That's a good price. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Later, Kratos. Later, Kratos.